Hey everyone, this is Cholera, and I am here with Rise. Uh, we're casting Game 3 of Hero vs. Flossen. This has been a very good series, I gotta say, and this final map is gonna be Return of the King, which promises to uh, perhaps bring us some more epic play. Um, I do think it's slightly, ever so slightly turn favored, but uh, I wouldn't put it, you know, I, I don't even think stats necessarily matter that much. I think it's gonna be more about strategy, especially looking at last game, where Hwasen started with that completely all-in expansion build, if you can call it that, I mean, because, uh, you know, it, just like an all-in five pool is all in an all in 14 command center is pretty all in against the zerg you're basically assuming the zerg does nothing else other than 12 hatch because pretty much everything else will destroy uh your your 14 cc especially on medusa where you don't get really a ramp or anything so hwasen definitely picking a good strategy and and leading it to the win on a very zerg favorite map you know what i was thinking i think he was actually perhaps just a little bit perhaps scared of playing a standard game against zero after the thumping he got in game one so he said basically either i'm gonna get a huge advantage or i'm just gonna leave this series uh and he got a huge advantage and obviously that was a great idea. Worked out very well for him. Uh, but I gotta say, my hero, he is impressing me. His play is solid. He's doing a good job. He's got good micro. He's got solid macro. And uh, really his game sense has, in general, been pretty good. The only exception being the fact that he stayed in Tier 2 tech against a solid Terran mech. Especially one that moved out as early as... Um, Washington's did, and that's actually a key to that build. Getting out of your base early against a Zerg player gives you a huge advantage in succeeding with that build, and that's something that uh, the game that you mentioned of Flash versus GG play, we did not see from Flash. Flash stayed in his base uh, almost the entire game until he finally decided to try to move out, and at that point, GG play had already had like six bases or something, or eight or something ridiculous, and like you said, GG play at that point just ran him over. So, uh, Washington basically doing everything right, taking the early advantage and then playing the build the way that it needed to be played to win it and uh, by hero again good fight but just not enough at this point though the game is at 1-1 and I don't know if we'll see any head game so much as standard play because the standard play is the way to go when you uh, well maybe not but I would imagine standard play is the way to go and wow look at that artist drawing a picture of I'm guessing Washington yes it says Washington obviously that's Washington or unless <laughs> Washington is a tree and hero is the guy I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense. Either way, it looks like uh, they are cross positions. You know, we don't really mention that enough when we do these uh, games, it seems. But uh, cross positions generally benefit one player versus the other, especially when we're talking about uh, different races. So this is actually going to allow, uh, you know, uh, by hero to get up his his his, uh, his macro up a little bit, a bit more unharassed than he might otherwise. But we are going to see. 12 hatch from him so yeah that is going to definitely benefit him a little bit Washington on the other hand uh, looks like we may be what? seeing something similar to last game because oh right now we're not seeing a barracks that's right Washington doesn't have a barracks and that can only mean one thing at this point he's either playing uh, for minerals only and going for a super duper SEV drill rush I don't know what he's doing or he's going for the 14 CC this girl knows it she knows exactly what's going on and she's like Washington you're going to get scouted, but Huashin is cross-positioned. So again, this cross-positioning is going to help Huashin out uh, very much so in getting that 14cc up successfully. And that is crazy, twice in a row. I cannot believe he's doing this again. I mean, this is just crazy and he's gonna get away with it yet again there's even if even if um you know he was at a l closer location the hero it wouldn't matter 12 hatch is solidly and thoroughly defeated by 14 command centers there's just nothing the zerg can do the zerg can watch that you can watch the freaking command center go up and they can watch a terran take a huge lead looks like that's the white version of yellow arnak and luxury over there and uh <laughs> you know we're gonna see the only thing is is hwasen gonna stick to his guns go medic marines or is he going to go for, again for that uh, crazy uh, strategy of his where he goes for that um, early factory and you know he's going to be playing two base against two base here looks like he's going to go M and M so he is going to go back to basics here no matter what he does he's going to have a big advantage and I got to think this is could be significant enough of an advantage to give him the win here because look I mean right now a three hatch mulus caress is going to be so much less effective against this build um, you we're going to see so many more medic marines we're going to see a powerful either a powerful timing attack before the spire is even done 
or we're just going to see him be super duper ready with all those extra minerals he's got right now. Oh, it looks like a uh, hero just trying to take out a SCV there. It doesn't get there. Um, you know, either that we're going to see that crazy, uh, you know, that crazy, crazy good turret defense and then followed by fast tanks, fast vessels. I mean, I just feel so bad for Hero right now. This is this could just be a build order win here, but of course, Hero can change that uh, by playing very well. Well, Hero has already deviated from what he did last game, and he has actually gone for the third hatchery before the tech at this point. Now the lair going up, so he's definitely going to be a bit slower in his tech, and uh, I'm wondering if he's going to try to do something else. Maybe he'll opt for uh, a Hydra, or not maybe maybe not a Hydra build right away, uh, or maybe Hydra into Lurker, rather than what he did the first game, which was Muta Harass, uh, somewhat unsuccessful. I mean, well, it was successful in taking out and delaying any units from Huash from getting out, but at this point, uh, he's going to be going up against Eminem, and he knows it. So uh, maybe we will see Lurkers come from at this point. I don't see a Hydra Den down, so I'm going to guess that he is going to go for a Spire. Uh, but either way, you know, he's going to have to... He's got his work cut out, cut out for him. He's going to have to do a lot of damage early on. Otherwise, that economy, like you were saying, of Washington is just going to own him. I mean, there's no way he's going to be able to keep up with this. The two command center is such a powerful build if it goes unharassed. And at this point, it is. And a pretty good wall going up. So Washington really not taking any risks here uh, and I think that is definitely the way to go we are seeing a spire going up by the way so we are going to see three hatch muta coming out for um, hero and and uh, again cross positions still going to continue to play into Washington's hands right now it looks like he's going to get down a factory as well so uh, I'm guessing we're going to see some SK Terran build going on here which uh, could be a, could be a good move if he goes mass science vessels uh, he, he could do a lot of damage early on especially uh, to those mutas that will be coming out in the very near future. Yeah, I mean, you know, to make another sports analogy here, this is like a power play, like a super power play. I mean, basically, we're starting the game here with uh, with Hero just down two players almost. I mean, he's got to fight an uphill battle. He can do it, you know. I mean, we saw in game one of the series that he is able to scourge science vessels like it's nobody's business. Um, and he's able to just use Dark Swarm like, uh, you know, who's just born as a Zerg player or something. He was born to play Zerg. And, uh... And right now, though, we're seeing this timing push. Like I said, there's with the with twelve uh, with the fourteen CC, you can achieve a very powerful timing attack before the Zerg can even get his uh, mutalisks out. And uh, you know he is going to go for that timing attack, and he still will have enough minerals to build turrets in his main, even if uh, he loses his entire force, which he won't do. So uh, you know, right now we'll see if he goes for it, and we'll see if zero if hero puts up enough um, sunken <laughs> colonies. He's also building an expansion at the lower right. That's a smart move, uh, although I wonder how long it's going to be before Hwasen spots that. Yeah, and we saw in the first game uh, where Hwasen was a bit more unsuccessful in it in his Eminem uh, attack versus Hero, he actually uh, he spotted that expansion pretty quickly, and he wasn't able to take it down, and that is what kept Hero in the game. He did manage to take out the third expansion, or the fourth base of Hero in that game, but he wasn't able to take out the original third, uh, the original second, sorry about that. And now we're going to see a Mutalisk harassing, and again, Hero has a good Muta harass. We saw that in the first game, he did a great job against Eminem with his Muta, but this time, yeah. he's going up against a much heavier uh, Terran force here, because he's got more barracks to pump these these Marines out, and even though he's picked off a few here, he's take, take, taken out about three, four, five Marines so far, actually doing a pretty good job oh, here. Oh, wow. He's taken out Whoa. almost all the Marines, and uh, actually doing a really good job, surprisingly. What? He's also going to get that eBay, and Washington, I don't know what he's doing, but right now, he's actually putting himself in jeopardy of, of losing this game. I don't know if he was a little too complacent with what he had. He's pulling back the rest of his main force, so he did have uh, more Marines backed up, but if he, he continues to lose him at the pace that he was, and, and Muta's continuing to be reinforced here, so it looks like uh, By Hero is going to kind of dedicate to this a little bit and see if he can whittle down the forces of Washington and, and end it with Muta. <laughs> oh my goodness! And it looks like he's doing not a bad job at all. If he does, even if he does no more damage, he's certainly slowed down Hwasen a great deal this game. I mean, he's uh, made him cancel that second command, second engineering bay. Although right now we're seeing that he's having a little, just a little bit of problem with his um, macro while he's doing all this uh, crazy mutilus uh, harass up there. I gotta say, this kid has got the spirit of Jadong in him. And oh, uh, yeah. by the way. One of the first games where Jalizerg unveiled his uh, 
uh, Mutalisk stacking trick. You know, back in the day, he didn't invent it, but he was the first player to really use it successfully. That game I casted, it was against Hwasen. None other than Hwasen. <laughs> so right now we're seeing sort of three years later, Hwasen still getting kind of owned by the same kind of build. Although right now he's going to have science vessels out, and he's going to have them much earlier than he should, you know, if he had gone for a normal build, like I was keep saying. So that's going to pretty much end this reign of terror here of the of the Mutalisks. Obviously they're going to go down to just one or two irradiates. But the question is, has the damage been done? He's already halfway into his tech switch. He's got the Hydras out. He's probably got the Morphin yeah. to Lurkus very shortly. He's got that second expansion going up. But Huashin, of course, again, very reminiscent of the first game, is pushing out with good timing. And we do see three Lurkers out on the field already. Uh, maybe four, five, five Lurkers at this point. It looks like, oh, man, if he doesn't stop Lurkers... He yeah, might that's be able what I was to thinking. own Washin, and uh, I don't know if he's setting it up. It looks like he's setting up a bit of a trap here. I think he's trying to force Washin. Oh, but the science vessel is out already, so stop lurkers will not work. There is no way that will work against that sizable medic marine force. Although that sizable med medic marine force could have been a lot bigger if he didn't lose so many to Muta. Uh, and I, I don't know what the commentators are pointing out over there. Maybe they're trying to tell him to uh, expand again or something. But oh! look at this. He's gonna go right to the. Oh, nobody oh. backs off just out range out of lurkers and uh hero i don't know if uh, he, he must have seen that he had the he had the uh muto over yeah. there as well and it looks like he's going to try to pincer him a little bit with these lurkers Wash didn't seem to even notice or notice a little bit later uh and that could have been successful he has pulled out the original two uh that started that trap and now uh it looks like wow and, and he's been spotted at the bottom right he's probably already been scanned there but he's been spotted officially and i just wonder if he uh if by hero has his tech up as quick as he did in the first game but Either way, he's if, if, if he can block the ramp, he'll be in pretty good shape. There's the Queen's death, so he is about to get that tech up. There it goes right there. The Hive's going down now. He should be able to defend that pretty well, but if Washington bounces back and forth like he did last time, he'll be in a pretty good position to really keep By Hero contained. Yeah, I, yeah, that's absolutely true, and we could be seeing some dropship play from Hwasen. That's really something he's quite good at, as we saw in game one. Uh, you know, he loves his drops, and if he can get one or two good drops, I mean, that main that main base there at the lower right, that new expansion is completely undefended, other than the three lurkers on the ramp. Um, you know, if... On the other hand, Hero can get some Nidus Canals up and get Dark Swarm up in time. He's going to have a huge advantage because he's so good at Dark Swarm, i got to say. I mean, this kid has got all the fundamentals down. He's got some Hydras also. These are not just meant to be made into Lurkers. They're actually upgraded Hydras uh, with speed and everything. So he's going for kind of a weird timing attack here. Wow. Looks like uh, he's going to lose a number of the uh, his forces, though, and... Uh, but he's going to take a good number of Hwasen's forces down also. However, I do suspect that Irradiates are about to come out, and, and with those, I think the Mutalisks, at least, will be uh, rendered useless. Um, also, the Lurkers, obviously, uh, are, are, are affected by them, too. So I don't know about using these resources on these Hydras, man. I mean, Hydras are pretty, uh, you know, they're very, very use. you, you got to have a specific reason and a specific timing to get them in ZVT. Otherwise, they're just not very good. They're not cost-effective against M&M. &M. Uh, and there certainly weren't any, um, you know, I, I don't know if that was a good idea at all. I think maybe saving the minerals for Lings would have been better uh, for Lings later on. But looks like he's going to go in right now here with a lot of Lurkers. And with uh, Hydra's backing it up, kind of. Uh, I don't know if he's going to win this battle, though. Looks like Hwasen. Wow. This is too close to call. I, I guess, yeah, I would say Hero actually took that game. And Hwasen not oh. running away with his vessels. Looks like he loses the vessel carelessly there. Um, and, and, you know, I think he has beaten back Hwasen. So, yes, I am going to call that a marginal victory for Hero. And we have seen some irradiates out, and, and look at that, Defiler Mount going down. I got to say, man, Hero is my hero. He is playing some great StarCraft. I love the builds that he's doing. I think that it's very creative play in a non-standard fashion. And look at this, just continuing to pop out these Lurkers as wow. he waits for those Defilers to get ready. He's going to be shortly putting con some Consume up. He's got a lot of Hydras, and he is forcing he's forcing Washington back. Washington does not have enough forces. Wow. He's forced back. He's going to be forced back all the way to his base, and, and 
and he's only got, what, two or three science vessels. Look at that force <laughs> oh of hydra, though. He's got plus one carapace. That's going to hold up very well. Uh, he's not targeting the lurkers at all. The lurkers are walking around behind him. Oh, that's and now so taking dead. out another science vessel. He has forced them back into his base. He may be able to break that wall. Washington now trying to get some tanks. He finally realized that he cannot fight this with just medic marines. Trying to also get an expansion. He's upgrading siege at the machine shop. He's got about five vessels out at this point. The lurkers and hydras are trying to debate whether or not they should move in. He's got a great force. Probably two control groups of hydras and about six or seven lurkers or maybe even a few more than that. And look at this. Washington is a little bit confused at this point. I don't think he realizes how this happened. Lurkers now on the ramp. He's got uh, seven there. He's got a new expansion going up. This is very reminiscent of the first game. Again, Defilers now coming out. It looks like the Defilers are going to be heading over. Ligs coming out at this point. They're going to be used mostly for consume. And as soon as Dark Swarm, they're going to be very effective as well against any units that Washington can put out. A lot of irradiates going down. We're going to have to see some plagues on those if they're going to survive. And look at this. Washington with a decent force at this point. Moving out with his tanks, his science vessels, yeah. and his medic marine force. Going to do a pretty good job of forcing him back. But again, the Defilers are out. And the consume is going to be ready probably by the time they even get to the battlefield. And Dark Swarm may own Washington. He's so close to his base that it's going to be very hard to defend against that, that Dark Swarm that we may see there. And I think Washington is really in a lot of trouble. Wow, looks like we're seeing a dark swarm here with the lurkers underneath it. That's critical, absolutely critical, and these hydras are actually doing a pretty good job. I'm going to have to swallow <laughs> my words here. Wow, looks like the lurkers getting underneath. The hydras critically have kept the science vessels in check. Only three vessels for Watson. They're also a pretty good meat shield. I'll give you that. They're a oh. good meat shield against the uh, medic marines so that the lurkers can go up and advance, but looks like he's walking into a valley of death, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. There's a cloud hanging over the Valley of Death, and it's going to be a Valley of Death for Watson! So it doesn't matter if there's tanks over there. Lurkers don't give a crap when they're underneath the Dark Swarm, and the Academy is going to go down. Also, <laughs> and another Dark Swarm intercepting the Marines. Where did this kid hero come from? He is my hero! Also, looks like he is going to go on to the semifinals of the MSL! Washington getting knocked out once again in the round eight. He is not going to make it to the MSL Finals this year. And wow, look at this. <laughs> Dark Swarm on the ramp. Hero is just pushing his way in, forcing his will upon Washington. And Washington has nothing to say about it. The ZVK, ZVT Red Sniper is not going to be able to pull out a victory at this point. Defiler is just hanging out at the outside of the base. There are not even enough irradiates to take care of him at this point. More lurkers morphing. That expansion is completely separated from the rest of the main base. Lurkers are inside the base at this point. Dark Swarms all the way into wow. the barracks lines. There are no units that are going to be able to take care of those at all. Those tanks obviously cannot do any damage to those bird lurkers under the Dark Swarm. They're going to go down. That expansion about to go down by Hero just has to make the decision to kill him. He's just got to chop off his head at this point <laughs> and he's got the game. Scourge is coming out to take care of what's left of that size vessel cloud. It looks like they're not going to actually get any this time, but it doesn't matter. He is on the barracks line. He is taking out reinforces, reinforcing units as they come out. Another Dark Swarm. He's got to surround on that, wow. that little grouping of barracks at this point and man there is no way Washington can come back from this by hero has just forced his way in an unlikely win against a 14 cc build again against Washington and GG wow GG. amazing game man amazing game yeah, and we would be remiss not to mention that the mid-game Hydras is a new build. Uh, you know, someone's going to point out that in the year 1997, okay, maybe not 97, but 2003, some Zerg did it against some Terran. Yeah, it's been done before, but not recently and not to great success like Hero did. A very nice timing attack, I gotta say. And he proved me wrong. Those Hydras were cost-effective. I mean, they kind of fill an important gap between when you get Lurker and when you get defilers, I guess, and that was a strategy. And of course, you have to use them as well as he does, which is uh, very, very difficult. You have to use them uh, as kind of as shields to block for the lurkers so they can get down, and then they are the ones that actually do the real damage. Um, and, and, you know, just pulling that off is so difficult, especially coming up with something that could defend against uh, a good medic marine push uh, like Hwasen had. And he just, he played a consummate game of Zerg. He did a good mutilus harass. Um, he didn't get that much, but he got, he got like at least a control group actually of marines. And he followed up with an innovative mid-game strategy. And he followed up with dominant end game play. I mean, just perfect Zerg play all game long.
Yeah, man. Very exciting stuff. Very well done for sure by Bye Hero. I, I am definitely keeping my eye on this kid. He is doing a great job. He's walking that golden path or whatever you called it. He is getting there, man. He the is Royal now Road. moving the Royal Road, whatever it is. The uh, the yellow brick road, whatever you want to call it. He's he is getting he is making his way. He is now in the semifinals, and he is gonna actually, in my opinion, put up a very good fight against whoever he goes up against. If he continues to show us the level of play he has showed us thus far in the entire series against all of his opponents, I mean, I'm just very impressed by everything that he's done at this point. And uh, I know that I'm kissing his ass at this point, but really, those were some GGs, and he overcame. Some some serious uh, statistical, I don't know, hurdles, whatever you want to call them, against Washington. Washington uh, pulling out only one win in that best of three series. I mean, I, I think that everyone thought going into this that Washington was uh, the favorite, at least before the first game happened anyway. And, and by hero proving everyone wrong, uh, or at least me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else thought that really. But uh, I definitely thought that Washington had an advantage going into this. And by hero, fantastic job. And I look forward to uh, watching his games in the semis. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, as a reminder, just for those of you who don't know, games two and three of uh, Best versus Bisu and Luxury versus Lita. Uh, no, not Lita. Luxury versus Fantasy, uh, I think. Yeah, Luxury versus Fantasy are on Moltramp's account, so you can look for them there. And uh, Jadong versus Stork should be coming up pretty soon. Games two and three should be coming up, so stay tuned for them. Uh, what a good series. Um, yeah, I got to say, go hero. And that's it for me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next commentary. Take care now. Bye-bye.